Thank you, uh, last Count Corley. I move the amendments to the motion and I welcome this timely opportunity to debate the important issue of early learning and childcare. And before speaking to the substance of the motion, I suppose I just want to briefly reflect on the, the 18 months that's gone by. And I agree with what Deputy Function and what other uh, speakers said that COVID has pose absolutely huge challenges to the early learning and childcare sector. And the people working in, the, in this sector, and primarily the women working in this sector, they've shown incredible resilience. And I always think back in particular to those really dark days of, of January of this year, where childcare professionals and childcare providers, they stepped up. They kept services open for the children and for their parents, but particularly for the most vulnerable children and for children whose parents were, were essential workers. And they continued to deliver that incredibly high standard of learning and care. And I know people all over the country are very grateful to their actions at that time. And whenever I visit a childcare facility, I'm always struck by the absolute commitment of childcare providers and childcare professionals to doing what's in the best interest of the children in their care. But I also understand that people working in this sector want more than just words of praise. They want to see action. And I think across the doll, we do all share the same goals. And that's affordability, accessibility and high quality early learning and care, paying conditions that are commensurate with the dedication of the staff and the demands of this job, and providers who are able to operate in a safe and a sustainable manner. And I think we'd all acknowledge that this is an area that was neglected for far too long, and that for decades the state failed to invest in childcare, and they left women to juggle their own childcare needs and their careers. And we know Ireland can do better than that and we're committed to doing so. And I've tabled an amendment to this motion as while the government accepts there is a need to continue to develop, continue to reform the early learning and childcare sector, the programme for government does make extensive commitments in this regard. And more importantly, we've already begin, begun work on delivering those commitments, bringing real and lasting development and reform that will benefit children, parents, early learning and childcare professionals and providers. And look, I think we all recognise the complexity of this issue and its seriousness. Its seriousness for children, for parents, for providers and for childcare professionals. And I think that degree of seriousness does require detail. And I note that we're not presented with any costings in respect of the measures that are proposed today in this motion, nor have any costings been addressed in any of the presentations we've, we've received so far. And I don't think that saying one, cost, one third of the costs of childcare will be paid this year and two thirds thereafter without any reference at all to the actual figures. I don't think that speaks to the seriousness of the issue that we're speaking to today. And in the counter motion that we're putting forward, I set out in detail the costings, the investment that this government has put into the childcare sector over the last year. So I'm always happy to talk about this issue and debate this issue, but I think it has to be on foot of detail and on foot of recognising the cost and the value of childcare to our state, to our parents and to our children. As we know, the past 18 months, they've been profoundly difficult for many sectors of our society and our economy, and the early learning and childcare sector is no exception. And since coming into office, I've sought to ensure that services remain open, that they've been supported and they could retain staff. And in July of 2020, the July stimulus package included the EWSS as sustainability funding and full resumption of the HA programme. In August of 2020, 2020 we, we provided the reopening support package that included a 14.2 million capital grant for childcare providers and an 18 million reopening support package. Subsequently, in Christmas and following, and in, in January of this year, we created tailored funding arrangements in, respect, in response to the level five restrictions that were reintroduced. And this included a 12 million COVID operating support payment a new strand of COVID sustainability funding. And this was all in addition to the payment of the EWSS to providers. And with regard to the EWSS, last July, I negotiated a sector specific exemption. So, that's the, so childcare providers did not have to demonstrate the drop in turnover that applies to all other sectors. And since October of 2020, the EWSS has been paid at enhanced rates. And those rates are estimated to cover 80% on average of the uh, staff costs in the sector and 50% on average of total operating costs of childcare providers. And this amounts to 34 million euro invested every month, every month 
in childcare providers around this country. And there is strong evidence that this level of investment is paying dividends. The data on services that closed and opened in 2020, they're directly uh, comparable to 2019. So there hasn't been a loss of capacity despite COVID. Data from the Office of the Revenue Commissioners indicates that the number of employees in the sector has not changed substantially over the course of the pandemic. And data from the annual early year sector profile survey reveals that in 2020, Unlike in previous years, we didn't see those sharp increases in the fees that parents are, are, are being forced to, to, to pay across the sector. So I'm proud of the work that my department has done across the pandemic, and I want to particularly thank the Child Care Advisory Group that has been invaluable in coordinating with my department throughout. And while rapid government responses were required and were successfully delivered in response to the COVID-19 challenges for the sector, the importance of long-term and long-lasting development and reform is now even more significant. And the reality is that we have a number of related challenges facing the childcare sector. Parents are faced with fees that are beyond their ability to pay. Pay and conditions of staff are not commensurate with the job that they do. And many providers are struggling with sustainability. And it's not enough to make fees affordable for parents if staff still aren't paid enough. And it's not enough to increase the staff pay if services end up struggling to survive. And it's not enough to support providers if parents and staff are left behind. So all three elements have to be addressed together. And we've put in place a reform agenda that recognises the scale and that complexity, that interlinked element of each of these three. To reduce fees for parents, we've already rolled out the National Child Care Scheme. It now provides subsidies to 80,000 children, reducing the costs of early learning and care. And progress has been made, but I understand and I recognise the very substantial stress still placed on too many parents by the costs of childcare. And it's for this reason that we're developing a new funding model that will ensure the additional investment committed by government will further reduce the costs to parents. And beyond that, it will ensure additional supports can be provided to children from disadvantaged backgrounds, compensate providers so they can deliver early learning and childcare on a sustainable and high quality basis and attract and retain a well-qualified workforce. And to improve staff pay and conditions, we've established a joint labour committee in the early learning and childcare sector to draw up an employment regulation order, which would determine minimum rates of pay for early learning and childcare professionals, as well as terms and conditions for employment. We're creating a workforce development plan for the sector. It will be published by the end of this year, and it will ensure appropriate numbers of early learning and childcare professionals, support the achievement of qualification targets for the workforce, establish role profiles and career frameworks and set out plans to develop a national system of continuing professional development. And of course, earlier this year, we launched the National Action Plan for Childminding, which sets out a phased approach to bringing childminders, who are so important to so many families, into the scope of state-funded supports and regulation. And the National Development Plan launched yesterday recognises early learning and care as a strategic investment priority with significant funding earmarked to increase capacity in the sector in coming years. And Deputy Function re referred to the protest outside the Dáil today and I was pleased to be able to go out and speak to providers, many of whom I've met over the last year and listened to the issues they've raised with the NCS. I've heard those issues. We are undertaking research about how we can address those issues in a targeted manner and I look forward to bringing back uh, proposals to address that specific issue so no children, particularly the most disadvantaged children, are not left behind. But to conclude, Las Corla, what I think is really important to recognise is the scale of the challenges we face in this sector, but also the complexity of the solutions. But I think it is really important to state, and that's why we're putting forward this counter-amendment, that very substantial work is already underway. Early learning and childcare is a public good. It benefits all of society. And this has become even more evident in the context of the pandemic we've just undergone. And work is being progressed by government and it will deliver needed and long-lasting reform in this essential sector. And the government has supported the sector as it rose, as the sector rose to the challenge posed by COVID. And as the pandemic abates, we will work to continue those supports through the new funding model, through the joint labour committee, 
through the child minding action plan and the workforce development plan and through additional investment we will deliver a better deal for parents providers childcare professionals and most importantly for children thank you last